If one lives by feeding off of the other's dream realms and one often changes hosts, one's spirit will weaken and suffer damage during the transfers, said Robin Hood. But if one were to live long term within a set host's body, one could instead preserve and nurture the spirit to stabilize it. He paused. Senior Memo, could it be that you're already approaching your limit and that's why you have to pick me to be your host to your race? Having been seen through, Memo neither denied it nor became angry. Instead, he grandly admitted, Ha, huh, that's right. Who'd have thought, boy, that you were actually so well learned and knowledgeable that you'd even know something like that? Robin Hood's expression was unperturbed. Unable to intuit what this boy was thinking, Memo continued, However, don't assume that this elder absolutely must have you as a host. Wonderfully gifted demons number in the millions. Any one of them would beg on their knees for this special honour. You're the one who should carefully consider whether you can afford to miss this opportunity. In truth, over these long years, Memo's spirit had steadily degenerated. He'd originally resided within a demonic device and happily lived there. With 180 years of meditation, he would have been brimming with energy again. But it had just so happened that Sha Hualing, unaware of this, had at the end of a series of absolute coincidences used the device as a weapon and unloaded it onto Luo Binghe. Consequently, Men Mo had not the strength to search for another host. But on the road to his doom, he'd unexpectedly discovered that, buried within the body and consciousness of the boy he newly resided in, lay a concealed and faintly discernible yet incredible power. He'd been ecstatic. There was no way he would let this opportunity go. He'd already decided that no matter how adamantly Lorbinko refused, he'd wheedle and pester, making threats and promises. Even if it meant exhausting every single method he had, he would persuade the boy to learn his demonic techniques in order to make Lorbinko's body and consciousness an even more suitable residence for him. This elder will give you time, so think through it carefully said Memoir. Otherwise, I'll trap your and your master's consciousness within the dream realm forever. This elder is capable of that much. Lorbinka's head snapped up. For an instant, a cold light flashed in the youth's eyes. Memoir froze, intimidated. Right now, you're discussing terms with me, and you are free to say anything. Lorbinka's gentle and humble demeanor from moments before was entirely gone his voice bitterly cold. But if you harm Shi Zun, any agreement is void. Men Mo was frozen for a long time before he finally returned to himself, stunned that he'd actually been terrorized by the presence of an ordinary, insignificant cultivator of the human realm. He had intimidated souls throughout the three realms for hundreds of years, even in the miserable battle where his corporal body had been destroyed he had not lost to anyone in terms of presence. How could he have known that in future generations this presence would be called the protagonist's exclusive aura of badassery? The cave exploded with a sudden bellowing laughter. Boy, you really have quite the temper. As that ancient voice said those words, Robin Hood felt his limbs become heavy the scenery around him spinning before he was plunged into darkness. In a flash, and with a start, Lorbinko awoke inside the woodshed, his back utterly drenched with sweat. At the same time, Shen Qingqiu also sprang up in bed, like a corpse coming alive after death. Head dizzy and vision spinning, he gasped for breath for a while, and only then did he finally relax. Horrible, 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 horrible enough to die! How come? How come when, in the original work, Momo dragged Ningying Ying into a dream within a dream, her dream was a comforting childhood memory wherein her parents let her pick flowers and ride horses, but how come on his turn, he had first been surrounded by fist-sized man-eating wasps, then been dashing madly through narrow passages of a tomb while closely pursued by a giant ball of fire? The most terrifying thing was that, in the final part of the dream within a dream, Momo had woven in Shen Qingqiu's greatest fear. Within a damp, dark dungeon, he had been suspended in mid-air by a ring around his waist, unable to feel his limbs. 
When he opened his mouth, no sound came out and he could only helplessly hiss. His entire body burned with pain. Only after an unknown length of time had passed did the sound of a stone door opening drift from outside of the dungeon. Footsteps neither fast nor slow steadily approached. Then the shadow of a person was cast on the floor before him. On a thick black hem, exquisite patterns were embroidered in silver thread. The person emanated an ice-cold pressure, more stifling than the dungeon's airless darkness. Shen Jinchou couldn't clearly see the person's face, but he knew very well who they were. Men Mo truly deserved to be a legend among demons. That dream realm had been far, far too realistic. Even now, the damp odor of decay seemed to linger in Shen Jinchou's nose, nauseating him. Shen Jinchou managed to keep sitting for a while. When he rolled off the bed and began to retch, ding. Now, of all fucking times, a system notification sprang up. Congratulations on completing the scenario, Memoirs Barrier. The system awards you five hundred satisfaction points. Please continue to work hard. Shen Jinchou made a stop gesture and still had enough in him to try settling debts. Let's have a proper discussion," he said. "When you threatened to deduct satisfaction points, it wasn't five hundred, right? Why not set it at five hundred for both? Are large punishments and small rewards really fair? And I went through the extra scenario of the dream within a dream. So why haven't you awarded any extra B points to me, system? System, system, don't play dead. Let's sign a new contract. At this moment, someone slammed open the bamboo house front door. And rushed inside like a gust of wind. Shi Zun, Shen Qingchou knew who it was just from that sound. He miserably rolled his eyes. He really didn't want to see that face right now. Luo Binghe had already thrown himself to Shen Qingchou's side, overflowing with anxiety. Shi Zun, how are you? Do you feel the least bit unwell? Truthfully, not too terrible. If you could stay a bit further away, I'd feel much better. Shen Jingzhou averted his face and, with a yielding strength and poise, stood by himself. Everything is well with this master, he replied. Luo Binghe had wanted to help him up, yet his hand had been reflexively shoved away. He couldn't help but freeze. Shen Jingzhou didn't notice these small shifts in Luo Binghe's emotions. He tidied his clothes. Verifying to himself that even though he wore only an inner robe, his image remained spotless. Did that mean more trouble you further afterward? He asked. Trouble my ass! Mumu would have been falling all over himself to lick Luo Binghe's boots. Shen Jingzhou was asking, despite already knowing. Luo Binghe hesitated a bit before he replied. That demon elder's spiritual strength seemed to have been lacking. This disciple was expelled from the dream realm after a short while. Shi Zun, did you encounter anything inside the dream within a dream? Even if I did encounter something, could this master not handle it? Shen Qingzhou boasted shamelessly. Of course he couldn't handle it. Even now, the shadow of being a human stick remained. With Luo Binghe so close to him, his entire body was tingling, and he couldn't help averting his gaze to suppress his fear. Unsure of the reason for this. Luo Binghe only saw that Shen Qingzhou's expression was odd. His gaze no longer calmly looking straight at him like he usually did these days. It made his heart both fretful and anxious. Luckily, Shen Qingzhou adjusted his attitude with superlative quickness, remembering that he was a teacher and what he should do at this time. In the next instant, he reached out and took Luo Binghe's wrist. Hmm, being attacked by a demon is no joke. He said firmly, "This master will examine you for a moment. We cannot be negligent." Yes," said Luo Binghe obediently, his wrist firmly held. His heart had just known a moment of ease, but now it was once more suspended. On the off chance, Shen Qingzhou uncovered Men Mo and exposed the peculiarity within his body afterward. But though Shen Qingzhou diligently examined Luo Binghe for a time, he didn't detect anything off. Of course he didn't. Mo Mo had several hundred years worth of skill and experience, and his celebrated reputation 
wasn't exaggerated in the slightest. However, Shen Jingqiu still had to go through the motions. His examination fruitless, he nevertheless repeatedly urged Luo Binghe to visit Qingcao Peak and Qingding Peak the next day to let other people examine him, and finally to absolutely say something if an issue arose. Yet, Luo Binghe had no intention of leaving. With the appearance of someone full of worries, he started and stopped speaking several times before asking, Shizun, de- demons, are they all wicked beyond redemption? Must every last one of them be exterminated? Shen Qingqiu didn't reply to this question straight away. He stood in place, indeed finding it difficult to answer. Seeing Luo Binghe petrified, forcibly keeping calm while also somewhat anticipating his teacher's answer, Shen Qingqiu spoke slowly. Humans can be good or bad. So naturally, demons too can be good or evil. We often see demons victimizing people. But that doesn't mean there aren't cases where humans harm innocent demons. Don't put too much weight on race. This was the first time Luo Binghe had heard a teacher express this kind of opinion. He listened in a daze, heart thumping wildly. Shi Zun means... Even if someone is closely connected to demons, that doesn't mean the heavens find them intolerable. Is that right? Hmm. How can you claim they are intolerable to the heavens in the first place? Shen Jingqiu countered. If they are intolerable, why would the heavens let them exist? Who has the authority to say whether they ought to be tolerated or not? During this chain of questions, Luo Binghe's eyes gradually lit up. There was within him a faint sense of burning passion. Luo Binghe, you may choose to ignore the words this master tells you from here on out, Shen Jingqiu said at last, but you must always remember what I've told you here today. In this world, there is nothing intolerable to the heavens. This is true for all races, as it's true for humans. At this time, though Luo Binghe's heart leaned towards the righteous path, he wasn't a pedant. In any case, since whatever was within him couldn't be removed, why not put it to good use? He absolutely had to become stronger, so strong that he would never be powerless, strong enough to protect Shi Zun from any hand that dared to reach for him. Seeing Luo Binghe's eyes so dazzlingly bright, Shen Qingqiu couldn't imagine what he was thinking, but his own thoughts were a jumbled mess. His advice this time wasn't coming purely from a place of having developed an addiction to being the sage guiding the protagonist's life journey. The idea of the heaven's magnanimity was a universal concept, older than time itself, and it had been recycled like reheated old rice for decades by the historical wuxia and xianxia genres without the slightest hint of progress. But... In this world of ocean-deep hatred between humans and demons, who were unable to coexist and who had engaged in countless great wars in the past up to the present, the concept was extremely unconventional. Anyone who espoused it risked unilateral condemnation. As someone of mixed lineage, it had been extremely difficult for the original Luo Binghe to avoid being impacted by human hatred of demons and vice versa. Since the greater half of his life had been harsh and full of misfortunes, he'd even begun to despair and think that perhaps the world and the heavens both found his existence intolerable, that he should have never been born. Shen Qingqiu hoped that from this point forth, these words could plant a seed within Luo Binghe's heart and broaden his perspective. This is so that in the future, when facing the truth of his heritage, he could remain optimistic and not take attacks on his lineage to heart. Then maybe his behavior in the future wouldn't be so extreme, and he wouldn't become bent on taking revenge on the world. Perhaps even if some day Luo Binghe had to face Shen Qingqiu, who would throw him down into the endless abyss, he would be able to understand that this betrayal wasn't his fault. If that was possible, then even this scenario arrived and the system forced Shen Qingqiu to say lines like, Humans and demons cannot coexist. Their hatred is ocean deep and cannot be overcome. You fucker, hurry up and die. 
thereby slapping himself so hard that he sent himself flying, well, that would be that. Now that the atmosphere had grown heavy, Shen Qingqiu felt he'd gone overboard with his cool act. With his terror of embarrassment about to erupt, he coughed once. That said, demons are naturally gifted with spiritual strength, far more so than humans, he said. If their strength could be used for good and was dedicated to the righteous path, to the common people, then how could that not be a good thing? Demons had exceptional talent for cultivation and absolutely crushed the human realm in that arena. As the races were different, so too were their energy systems. Humans relied on spiritual qi, where demons relied on demonic qi. Though Shen Qingqiu reckoned that the two were basically the same, with only the colours and names being distinct. Maybe the demon realm had good feng shui or something, but the vast majority of demons were born fully charged with demonic qi. At age three, they could rip apart a human with their bare hands, and at age eight, they could split mountains and crack stones. Um, <laughs> that was a bit of an exaggeration, oops. However, the truth was that many humans had only mediocre aptitude. Even after cultivating for several decades, they could often only achieve the skill level of a small demon infant. Even more humans were like dried up ponds, their spiritual strength practically a perfect egg, i.e. zero. These humans were often said to be lacking spiritual roots. It truly couldn't get worse than that. If it weren't for the humans' comparative love of propagating and for the demons being generally sparse in number, the human realm would have long ago be commonized by demons. Honestly, they were just coasting on the fact that demon family planning was so strict. After suffering the torments of this world-changing journey, Shen Qingqiu hadn't slept the entire night. Two dark bags had already appeared under his eyes. He waved his hand. It's very late. If there's nothing else, then go and rest. Luo Binghe obediently asked to be excused. But he hadn't walked far when he heard Shen Qingqiu call him from behind. Come back. 